The Wildcats, they've allowed just 59 points per game. That's best in the Big East, and that's why Creighton head coach Jim Flannery said the offensive execution must be razor sharp. And you rejected by James. Execution must be razor sharp. And you rejected by James. Ten on the shot clock. Alger back door to Agnew. The Big East leading scorer couldn't get the friendly bounce, and there's the Villanova stop. Similar. I mean, this is really going to be a great X and O chess match between two great coaches in the Big East. Both in the top three in three-point shooting in the conference. Both coaches saying normally other coaches around the Big East say we're so hard to prepare for Creighton and Villanova. So they like playing each other because they're so similar. That three's off for Agnes. It's Cameron on who's able to get that layup going on a signature one cut for the Wildcats. What's a one cut? One cut, literally, I only remember like one and three because we had a chance to chat earlier today after shooting round, but it's basically a ball cut, UCLA cut, straight to the basket. Agnew from distance. Switches it home. Low to get into your movement, but that time, Sarda brings it over, and James had her hands in the way. That is indeed a foul. Agnew to the basket, and there's the potential on this play. Imagine, ironically, as Gadega makes a downhill cut, finishes in contact, attacks the rim. <laughs> the Villanova huddle probably was similar. And probably a little bit more focused on turnovers on their end. Agnew. Another fall away shot, Monica. They're shoot arounds, and because Agnew and Seagrass, they garner so much attention, it does become, well, who are the other players on the floor, and will they be the difference makers? And today, that has been the case. Harry Fredda said that's what the game would be decided upon. He said, stars close, but you got to get there, and your complimentary players have to support. Agnew, and one. Responsible. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> would issue a statement. <laughs> You're my PR. I, I got you, friend. I would have we made it nice and tidy. You went to Georgetown, <laughs> so you know how to do those things. Wow. Second chance opportunity. Front runner for Big East Freshman of the Year, scoreless thus far. Iron on Kine, I thought she did a great job of establishing position on that play. Ball just kind of bounced out. Agnew, how did she do that? A T of room to improve. There's a switch. Agnew was open. Could not hit. Alger with the long rebound. Battle for it with Mullen on the floor and a jump ball. Possession with Creighton. Shot clock set to 20 as Creighton gets a second chance. That's what the clock resets to. Now 10 on the timer here for Alger. He's got nine. Agnew with five. Pull up. Short. Villanova can hold it for the final. Ball movement. Renbao having some trouble getting it in, but finds Alger. Agnew on the drive. Short on the take. She made such a great good look at it. She's got to settle down just a bit, a little bit long. One for six now is Maddie Segris, the second leading scorer in the Big East. Quiet tonight. Agnew off the handoff. Jalen Agnew now just four for 14 to let him know you were there. Well, it was a woo behind you, <laughs> and there was a bucket. <laughs> Early he off this time. That was and a going good take. Over cool to start the second half. That was a good take, though. There's got to be more of that for the Wildcats. Agnew left wide open and makes some pay. Jacob was being guarded by a much smaller defender, Timmy Sarda, just now. And Villanova did not get her the ball in the paint. Right? And so for her to understand what is required for this group to be successful and her role in that, being selfish in a team way means I understand that I have to be prepared, I have to put in the hours in the gym, and I have to be aggressive for my team. There's the unselfishness. Finding Absolutely. You see the way they shoot the three? And their offense, which everybody else does not look forward to defending other than Villanova, and today Villanova has struggled. 
I don't even think they're done course. Why would they be a done course? They beat the ball. Oh, right now they're in a three-way tie for fifth at nine and seven left. Here's Agnew. The senior pulls up and knocks it down. Jalen Agnew. The net. He didn't do it too much. He told us you have to be sparingly about it. But his players are fully aware that they need to sweep this weekend to ensure and solidify that case for the NCAA tournament. Agnew will head to the free throw. Shooting just 32% from the field. So unlike their outburst last week, but they were able to overcome the 20 turnovers against DePaul. They have really struggled offensively tonight. Eight on the timer. Agnew. When Creighton needs a shot, the ball's in her hands. Just in and out. And a foul on Rimbach. Different styles of play. Creighton in the blue, St. John's in the white. What do you think this game comes down to, Harry? I think if Creighton can execute their offense, because you can't take it one-on-one -on -one against St. John's, they're too quick. Blue Jays only turned it over 11 times per game. at seventh fewest in all of women's college basketball. Off the fake, and Joe Trotamella says. Yeah, they can, they, can, they can put their guards and throw them into the post. I mean, they're not a big team, but they can post anybody up. KB's a Philly native, too. Oh, and they stole it from us. Yeah. <laughs> nice shot. Hey, Switch every screen. That's the best way I think to defend them because they run their off. I, it's tough for me. I, I would switch every screen. That's the best way I think to defend them because they run their offense so well. Twelve on the shot clock here for Elger. Cool. Olivia Elger is play. To Agnew, the Creighton does to you when they execute their offense they frustrate you and what happens is you just get frustrated on the offensive end too and that's what a lot of coaches tell us about playing you guys because all, all of the ball movement and the cuts you can't sleep when we when we run it well which hasn't been often on the ball winning three on three games so that's that's my best Kino story <laughs> what's your identity as a player coach what type of player were you growing up in Philly non-talented <laughs> So was I. <laughs> I worked hard, but I wasn't very talented. <laughs> they get out, they deny you the ball, and if you don't make the right cuts or the right reads, you're going to turn the ball over. Look at this. Great shot. Whoa! Agnew! Cuts, which is allowing St. John's to rebound yeah. and get out. For a while, Creighton wasn't missing, so they couldn't get out and run. Just one for five in the <laughs> second quarter are the Jays. Agnew can't get that to go. Convert. Creighton comes down here to three. That's where it really breaks your back. Uh, take it to him pretty well. She does a really good job of reading. From 11 points per game last year, look at that 19 this season. Off on the three this time, but Saunders gets the board. But if you're Creighton, you don't have any problem with her taking that shot. I gotta be honest with you, John. She was a lot better than I thought she was. I mean, I thought she had ability, but man, her offensive skills were way off the charts for what we thought they were. When did you realize it? About midway through this year, she put 40. Ooh, she put uh, 41 on LaSalle, I think. Even at 27. The exact opposite is happening now. Creighton is confused offensively. You said hey, this was a must-see game. Hey, it's, ama it's amazing, isn't it? Look about what you expected, right? Yeah, St. John's is... Look, at, look, look how aggressive they are now. They're, they're picking it up. They feel good about it. Creighton's got to try to get a slip on them or something because they're not going to... I don't think they're going to be able to dribble a body on them. Seven on the shot clock as we enter this final minute of the half. Agnew 
Ooh, from deep. Great. She's got it. Ooh, they missed Grigley on there. Wide open on the roll. She gets the offensive rebound, though. Agnew driving to the hole. Jalen Agnew. They give her a two. John's down by 15 after one. Quickly on off the roll, but Correa picked it off. I needed to do, but you unfortunately you, or fortunately, and who doesn't love spending extra time with Harry? Of course. Agnew. She's found her openings. You can't leave Leilani Correa. Not with the game she's having. That was just a blown coverage from Creighton. Creighton needing Agnew to get going, and she was fouled hard. Knocks down both, and St. John's has been strong in that department. Nine of ten from the line. Both teams shoot about 77% from three. Agnew, too easy. England. Back to the freshman, Correa. In danger territory with just one left to give. A great free throw shooting team in Creighton could be sent to the line. Agnew! And the top free throw shooter in the nation in Agnew. 52 straight makes from the line. 95%. For loading the ball and then her moving on the opposite side right into that gap with some incredible length to go up and get that pass. Joe Tartamella said it, Kim, and you were alluding to it with the penetration ability of this team. He said, if we overload, we could find somebody on the weak side. This teams here need to take a deep breath because emotions and adrenaline are starting to run high with the calls, and you can't let that impact you. Agnew double dribbles. England. Katie with the board. You said Agnew needs to get going. She puts up the shot, but St. John's... With this small lineup, but a lot of length from Correa and from Bailey.